Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here. And we've made it no secret on this channel that Skyrim is the host to what at times can feel like an overwhelming arsenal of powerful weapons. Between swords meticulously crafted by the world's best-known blacksmith, millennium-old axes wielded by actual past kings, and hammers literally forged in the fires of oblivion, you'll get your chance to interact with more than a fair share of useful tools for slaying your foes in The Elder Scrolls V. However, not every pointy stick in Skyrim is quite as powerful as some of the items we just described. Indeed, the game also offers an entire class of arms that seem utterly useless, even to the lowest level of characters. Often hilarious objects that leave us asking whether Bethesda was trying to create lethal weapons or just have a good laugh when designing them. Nonetheless, while there may be absolutely zero reason to equip them in-game, it can be quite fun to examine many of these useless tools. So, whether you're searching for a challenge, or just desire to be entertained, today we'll be taking a look at the top 5 weakest weapons in The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Starting off, when you're thinking of a weapon to defeat the world's most legendary dragon, or put down an entire camp of Skyrim's most vicious criminals with, Whatever the first thing that comes to your mind is, I'm willing to bet good coin that it isn't cutlery. But that doesn't mean it can't be, as despite them mostly being found as miscellaneous items, there are actually three locations in the base game the Dragonborn can pick up and actually equip a fork of all things. There's one found at the entrance to Gloombound Mine in Eastmarch, another that will spawn in on a table outside the Honeyside property if you purchase it in Riften, and the last one, believe it or not, is just chillin' in the middle of nowhere on the mountain where High Hrothgar sits. As a weapon, the fork is genuinely the weakest in the entire game. Dealing a base damage of 1 with a weight of 0.5, a reach of 0.7, and a value of 5 septims, it's literally impossible to find anything with worse stats. For something to compare it to, an Iron Dagger, traditionally seen as the weakest of Skyrim's more generic weapons, has a base damage of 4. To make matters worse, the fork is unaffected by any of the game's perks, as it's not technically a part of a class, nor can she be upgraded at a smithy. So the power this item has, even in the hands of the most skilled of craftsmen and highest of level players, is still pretty low. What you see is what you get. That said, poisons and more traditional arcane enchantments can still be implied, giving you some improvement potential. As a bit of a bonus item, you can also obtain and equip certain kitchen knives in the game as well. These are twice as effective, dealing a whopping two base damage versus the Forks 1. So at the end of the day, maybe it's for the best that these objects don't leave our dining rooms. Next on our list, the Hearthfire DLC introduced a number of new items to the game, mostly in the form of new foods, sweets, and decorations for us to enjoy in our homes with our families. But the expansion also gave us access to a single new weapon as well. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Wooden Sword. Found as random loot or able to be purchased from Skyrim's many merchants, the Wooden Sword is meant to be given as a toy to one's adopted children. But the player does have the ability to just keep it, and you can use the oak blade for yourself. That said, just because you can, doesn't mean you should. With a base damage of 2, a weight of 3, reach of 1, and value of 25, there's not much use this object has in combat. You'll recall in our last spot that I briefly mentioned the knife as being a similarly unhelpful weapon that also boasted a damage of 2. But I'd argue the wooden sword is even worse due to its increased weight, and therefore longer time between swings. So the wooden sword therefore produces even less damage per second. However, a somewhat redeeming quality is that the blade can be upgraded at a grindstone, using a piece of firewood, and is also classified as a one-handed sword, 
so your one-handed skill and corresponding perks can exponentially help to improve this hunk of labor's potential. Plus, like with pretty much everything, it can also be enchanted. So, while a poor choice initially, given some serious attention and love, the Dragonborn can really enhance this toy. But if you're gonna spend so much time at crafting stations and leveling your one-handed, you might as well upgrade a normal sword at that point. Or really, doesn't have to be normal. Any other sword in the game at all would probably be preferable. Coming in at number three, we have the Practice Arrow. Now, this is kind of cheating, as projectiles all by themselves in Skyrim are utterly useless, and we all know that anyway. They need something to be projected from, and I'll get to that in a moment, but my gosh do I have to talk about this item. The Practice Arrow can only be obtained at Angie's Camp, the secluded dwelling of a renegade Nord woman in the mountains of Falkreath. Angie is a capable woman, a master marksman currently hiding out after she killed two Imperial soldiers in an act of revenge after they murdered her family. A really brutal background, but despite this, she's a caring, polite, and respectful soul who will even offer to teach the player how to use a bow at her personal archery range. If you take her up on this proposal, she'll give you ten of these practice arrows, and every few in-game days, you can come back and get ten more. The Practice Arrow really lives up to its name. Dealing zero damage, weighing nothing, and also selling for nothing. Alone, it's the literal definition of worthless. However, Practice Arrows still need to be fired from a bow. And in Skyrim, the way an arrow's damage is calculated depends not only on its own damage rating, but also the damage rating of the bow or crossbow that it's being fired from. And unfortunately for the purposes of this video, there are no such bows that deal zero damage. In fact, the weakest bow in the game, the longbow, deals six points per attack. Furthermore, one's own archery skill also plays a factor. So, really, with a high enough level character and a powerful, say, Daedric or Dragonbone bow, the Practice Arrow can still be used as a vehicle to one-shot opponents with relative ease, putting a bit of an asterisk on its claim to worthlessness. Regardless, the Practice Arrow certainly remains the poorest in its class by a very wide margin. And when you're facing off against an onslaught of Dovas, I'd implore you to consider any other option. For fourth spot is yet another item that wasn't really designed to be used butchering armies of enemies, but instead for more, shall we say, peaceful purposes. The Woodcutter's Axe is among the more common items the player can find at just about any settlement in Skyrim. Its intended purpose is to be used to cut firewood at various designated chopping blocks, wood that can later be sold to the appropriate in-game merchants, or used in crafting and home building. But for the player that finds themselves in a deep pinch and for whatever reason has nothing else at their disposal, the woodcutter's axe can function as an armament of last resort. Dealing a stunning 5 points of health damage, a weight of 10, reach of 0.7, and value of 5, it's sure to strike fear in the heart of whatever timber you're cutting, but not so much other characters. The item's damage, at least when compared to some of the other items here on this list, isn't that bad? Again, comparatively speaking, but the cost of 10 points to carry weight alone will make it among the first items to be disposed of when you find yourself struggling to create inventory space. Additionally, improvements at a grindstone are off the table, so you'll be forced to enchant in order to try and scrape some power out of this blade. There's really no reason to have it for combat when iron daggers are a thing, and that's saying something. Suffice to say, timber is probably the only thing you should consider using this item to cut. And finally, last on our list, during the quest No One Escapes Sidna Mine, we're imprisoned in, and later escaped from, Sidna Mine, a notorious prison and work camp in Markarth. After being locked up, the entire contents of the Dovakin's inventory will be removed and replaced with nothing but a set of rags. Thankfully, the colorful cast of inmates in Sidna are 
are a creative bunch, and the Dragonborn will have a couple of opportunities to acquire shivs during your stay. The crudely assembled weapon of choice of the prison population here, well, not really of choice, that part's debatable, you get the idea. Shivs appear to be crafted out of some strange sharpened metal material, and wrapped in a rag. Though, despite its humble appearance, the shiv is in fact a good deal stronger than most everything else on this list, being comparable to that woodcutter's axe. A base damage of 5, weight of 2, reach of 0.7, and value of 5 makes the shiv almost identical to the previous entry on this list, save for that important carry weight stat we mentioned earlier. To be honest, this is very impressive for what is essentially a makeshift shank stick, and it will serve you well as you attempt to navigate your difficult but temporary life as an inmate. However, once you make it to the outside world, and especially after you get your things back, the shiv will quickly lose its appeal to more, shall we say, professionally crafted options. Though, as it's technically considered a dagger by the game's files, much like previous entries on this list, it can be improved via an enchanter, and is affected by your own character level and perks. Its only major restriction is that it can't be buffed at a grindstone. So, in theory, maybe in the right hands, this poorly assembled blade can deal some serious damage. And with that, we are going to wrap up. Five weakest weapons in The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Thanks for stopping by, everybody. Which of these underpowered arms did you personally find to be the coolest, or frankly most hilarious? And what ridiculous items have you used to bring doom to your enemies? Leave a comment down below. As always, like ratings are very much appreciated. Special thanks to all these wonderful patrons appearing on screen now. Again, thank you for watching, and hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out, everyone.